It's good to be back. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. First of all, I would like to thank the Lord for um, giving me the opportunity to attend the Polishing the Pulpit in Tennessee. And of course, I would like to thank all of you, um, the Lord's Church here in East Foothill, for giving me that opportunity to be there. It was actually a dream come true. I keep hearing that when I was still back in the Philippines. And I pray to God that uh, someday I will be there. And sure enough, God um, gave me that uh, prayers of mine, gave me the prayers. And uh, he used all of you to make that dream come true. So I'm so blessed to be there to and meet a lot of uh, a lot of people, a lot of brothers from different um, parts of the U.S. and even in some other countries. I've met brothers and sisters from uh, Mexico, um, Costa Rica, um, Canada, and uh, there's from Hawaii. So they're all over the place, and um, really thankful. And also, um, I would like to thank. Um, my, my brother, our brother, Brother James, for um, being here last Sunday. And uh, let me just tell uh, my brother James, I know he will be watching this on Zoom, that uh, I was in the Amen Corner <laughs> there in Tennessee while watching him preach on YouTube. I was like, Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm there, my brother. I'm in the Amen Corner. Well, this morning, we will be talking about evangelism. Um, Lord willing, it will be a series of lessons that I will be preaching for a number of Sundays. First, um, when I mention the word church, I am talking about the, the church universal. I am talking about the whole body of Christ anywhere in the world and not just a particular local church or local congregation that we normally refer to. Otherwise, I will refer to it as the local church or the local congregation. When I mention the word church, I am referring to the believers everywhere, again, who compose the body of Christ, which includes the local congregations, of course, including East Foothill. Now, people normally, they equate the number of attendees in the local church with three things. Number one, how effective the evangelism works are. Number two, if that local church is dying or not. Number three, if the true gospel is being preached or not. What do I mean by that? Let's do a comparison. Local congregation A and local congregation B. Again, normally, people equate the number of attendees with how effective evangelism works are. If local congregation A has few members and local congregation B has more members, they would think and they would say that A has uh, ineffective evangelism work. And they would say that B have more effective evangelism work. And then number two, A would be a dying church, a dying local church, because it has few members while B is a thriving church because it has more members. And number three, A, the local congregation A, they are not preaching the gospel because they have only few members. While B, they are preaching the true gospel because they have many members. But brethren, come to think of it, they are both the same Church of Christ. You see, is that the real deal? Is numbers a real indication how poor or how effective evangelism are being done in a particular congregation or not? Okay. Are people truly judging the right way? Okay. If you ask a local, uh, a local church member of the Lord's Church if he would like to see the pew occupied, of course, definitely he will say, of course, Brother Mike, I would love to see the pew occupied. S-R-O, 
standing room only. And that will be great, right? All of us want to have the few, the few occupied, right? So this morning, we will be talking about this and more. Our lesson this morning will be growing the church. Okay. To grow the church, number one, I will, be, I will be discussing four things. Number one, be intentional. If you want to grow the church, be intentional. What do I mean by being intentional? Be intentional means being mindful of what you want to achieve and taking the necessary actions to achieve it. You must be mindful. You must be purposeful in growing the church. Okay, number one on how to be intentional is we must have a deep love and concern for the Lord's church. For without a deep love and concern for the Lord's church, growing the church will only be a blueprint in our mind that never sees the light of day. In the book of Nehemiah, one day, Nehemiah asked a fellow Jew who just arrived from Judah how things are or how things were going in Jerusalem. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3, they said to me, referring to Judah, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and gates have been destroyed by fire. Verse 4, when I heard this, I sat down and I wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Nehemiah had a great love and concern for Jerusalem. He mourned, he fasted, and he prayed to God. This love of Nehemiah actually ignited his passion to act towards rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, as we will see later on. In the same way, my dear brethren, in growing the church, the whole body of Christ, universal, it starts with love and concern for the church of Christ. Next would be, we must pray for the growth, for the church growth. Every intention of ours must start with an act of prayer, calling upon our God in heaven. Nehemiah prayed to God. He prayed to God upon hearing the tragic things that happened in Jerusalem, particularly the wall of Jerusalem. Okay? Now, we saw in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4, that he prayed to God. And again, we can see that in Nehemiah chapter 2, that he prayed to God. The king asked, well, how can I help you? With a prayer to God of heaven. So likewise, you and I, as we grow the church, we must pray to God for church growth. Number three, we must have a plan and execute the plan. The next part of being intentional, my dear brethren, is to have a plan. To have a crystal clear plan of what you want to achieve and execute that plan. They say never go to a battle unprepared unless, of course, you have a death wish. Right? So Nehemiah, he had it all planned out in his mind, and look what he did. In verse 2, he knows his purpose. In Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 2, he knows his purpose. He said, send me to Judah to rebuild the city. He was talking to the king. He knows his time frame. After I told him how long I would be gone, the king agreed to my request. You see, Jeremiah knew how long it would take him to rebuild the walls of Jericho. Oh, sorry, the walls of Jerusalem. Number three, he knows where to get his materials. He knows what he needs to build the walls of Jerusalem. And please give me a letter addressed to Asaph the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need it to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress 
for the city walls and for a house for myself. Nehemiah had it all figured out how he would build the walls of Jerusalem. He had mapped every detail of the work that needed to be done. And that is being intentional. Be intentional. Nehemiah was mindful of what he wanted to achieve and took the necessary actions to achieve it. Now, in the same way, my dear brethren, in growing the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must come to God first in prayer for all the plans that we need. And we need to, to execute the plan that we have planned. Then everything by the Lord's grace and mercy, we will achieve all the plans that we had in our mind. Now, in growing the church, we must be intentional. And I want all of us to change our mindset to this. Be intentional in sharing the gospel to grow the church and not the congregation. I am seeing a look of, hmm, what does he mean by that? Not to grow the congregation. Is it not when you grow the congregation, you grow the church as well? That is true. I agree. That is true. So what do I mean when I say be intentional in growing the church and not the congregation? You see, my dear brethren, if our mindset, if our mindset is to grow, the local congregation, the local church, when we go out so far out of town, so far away from the local congregation, chances are we might not preach the gospel. Why? Because the people in that area won't be attending the local congregation you are attending to. And I've heard it in many times. I've heard it many times and seen the effect of people wanting to grow the local church and not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be prostrated, I will tell you. You will be prostrated if you have in mind to grow the local church and not the church of our Lord. Why? Because if the person we evangelize or even if the person we baptize went to another local church, instead of the congregation we are attending to, you will be prostrated. And I have seen people fighting for families. Oh, I've evangelized that family. That family should come in our congregation. How come that family is in that congregation? Oh, I baptized that family. He, they should be coming over here, not there. You see? Since your mindset is to grow the local church and not the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, that will be a problem, my dear brethren. You know, I have baptized individuals that never set foot on 14th Street congregation. I have evangelized to people that never set foot on 14th Street congregation. And I refer them to the local congregation that's near to them. And wherever you go, you must preach the gospel. By preaching the gospel wherever you go, you are actually doing the great commission that God, that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master, tells us to do. So grow the church. Be intentional of growing the church, not only the local congregation. Well, of course, at the end of the day, the local congregation will grow. And, you know, I'm telling you, my dear Brethren, you might be surprised. When you plant the seed so far away, you might be surprised that the seed that you planted so far away will come back to you. I have seen that happen. In Acts chapter 2, how many were baptized into Christ? 3,000 were added to were. It says 3,000 were added to the church, to the church, to the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. It did not say they were added to the local congregation. 
remember those people that were baptized, they came from different provinces. They came from different provinces. And the apostles were mindful of doing the Great Commission and growing the church. It doesn't matter to them where those baptized individuals will congregate. In Acts chapter 4, we see another huge numbers of people being baptized and added to the church. The apostles, again, did not say they were now a member of their local congregation. No, they all became members of the Lord's church. Remember the parable of the sower? The parable of the sower? He just keeps on sowing the seeds everywhere he goes until that seeds reach good soil. In the parable of the sower, how many soils were mentioned? Four. Those that fell along the path, those on the rocky ground, those on thorny bushes, and those in the good soil. Now, let's do a simple mathematics. Those who are mathematicians. Let's do a simple mathematics. Four soils. Everything equal. Four soils. One good soil. So one out of four. 25% the success rate of the sower. You can see now, there are more people who rejected the word than those people who accepted the word. Only one accepted the word. And three rejected them. So 25%. You see, the question is, was the sower lazy and not doing anything to spread the gospel? No, he's not. He did what he needed to be done in sowing, spreading the word of God. So be intentional. Number two, conviction. When you face a dead end, when you face a dead end, a closed doors, failures after failures, you must not give up. You must never give up. Let your conviction fuel, fuel your desire to move on. Again, in Nehemiah, he faced an opposition in his intention to rebuild Jerusalem, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10 and 19. Let me read verse 19. But when Sanballat, the Horonite, his servant Tobiah, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arab, heard about it, they jeered at us and despised us when they said, what is this thing that you are doing? You're rebelling against the king, aren't you? You see, despite the opposition, Nehemiah's conviction did not shrink back in his intention in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. In the same way in growing the church, my dear brethren, we might face great opposition along the way. People might, you know, shut their doors on you, won't listen to you, but I'm telling you, just move forward. Just move forward. Don't give up. Jesus, in his ministry, he faced so much opposition, and yet he never gave up. The conviction that Jesus had to finish his work was so great you know, Jesus came here on earth to build his church and to die for the church. That was the master plan. That was the intention. In our scripture reading, John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, I must obey him who sent me. I must finish the work that he has given me to do. And that is my food. Three things that we can learn about conviction in this verse. We can learn from Jesus Christ. Number one, Jesus said, I must. I must what? Conviction, I must obey. Conviction is about obedience. It's about, it's about obedience. Jesus was obedient to his father for the work that he was sent for. And we too must be also obedient to our calling of spreading the gospel. Now, for the second time, Again, Jesus said, I must. I must what? I must finish the work. I must complete the work. So number two about conviction is we must finish the work of our calling. It means that as long as we have this breath of life and are able to speak God's marvelous grace, mercy, and love, we must forever do so. In his final moment on the cross, 
Jesus said this wonderful three little words. It is finished. Jesus had finished his work. And you know, it will be a sight to behold in our life's final moment when we can utter the same words of Jesus and we can say to God, Lord, it is finished. Wow. It means that we have completed God's purpose in our lives. You have completed God's purpose for your life. Then Jesus said, it is my food. His food is to do the will of his Father, and that is conviction. Now, we can see the conviction of Jesus Christ in, in, in the verse that we read a while ago in John chapter 4, verse 34. Now, to finish the work of the Father uh, that the Father gave him is what gave Jesus the strength every day regardless of the opposition. It was his food to do the will of the Father and to finish the work. Now, we must be intentionally breathe and live every day to spread the gospel to grow the church. That must be our conviction. That must be your conviction. That will give us strength each day to ever move forward despite the hurdles and despite the setbacks. Number three, to grow the church is we need to amplify. Amplify means increase the volume, the sound, so that you can be heard. Right? Amplify. Crank it up, as they say. Brother Marcos, can you hear me loud and clear? Amplify. So that even the last person at the back can hear your message, can hear the message of the Lord that is in you. Increase the volume of the message of Jesus Christ that is thriving, living in you. You see all the billboards? You see all the huge billboards and the freeways? And when you go to the malls, how huge they are, how colorful they are? They were intentionally made that way. Why? To catch attention. To catch your attention. And billboards were made so big so that even if you're so far away, you can see the message of that billboard. Amplify. Amplify. The main purpose for them for doing so, so that the people can see their message clearly and hopefully will generate sales. That's the way they do it. Now, Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read, read by all. We you are your own billboards. We are our own billboards. We must amplify. We must amplify ourselves so people may know that you, we have Jesus Christ in our lives. We have a song that says, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Amplify. You know, how can we grow the church of our Lord Jesus Christ if we are so stuck in our busy lives? How are you to amplify the message of our Lord Jesus Christ that's living in you? Well, number one, you can use the social media. You can use the social media to amplify the message of the Lord that's in you. You know, you can never know when the seed will fall on good soil. Somebody, somebody, in your friends list, you know, might connect to the message that you keep on posting, that you keep on saying on the social media. Number two, use your connections to advance the gospel. Number three, use your position to amplify the message of the Lord that's living in you. Use your connections, use your positions. Here is a real story, real story. A janitor, he forever changed the life of one particular woman. This woman hits rock bottom, and then the janitor, seeing the woman, he shared 
the gospel to that woman. And he prayed for this woman. And the rest was history. A young newspaper boy delivering newspapers. He used his job to amplify the message of the Lord that is in him. He puts inside all the newspapers Bible verses. And then he will, he will deliver the newspapers with Bible verses in it. Be intentional by amplifying the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. B.J. Clark, a brother of ours, he said, I know there's power in the seed, but it doesn't mean a thing if I leave it in the bag. So true. So true. Number four, engage. To grow the church, we must engage. Engage involves oneself deeply in a particular activity or interest to become completely involved in something. Luke chapter 19, verse 5 and 7, about the story of Zacchaeus. You know, to grow the church, we must engage ourselves with people. Engage yourself with people. You know, when Jesus gave us the Great Commission, it was not a call for timidity or being timid. It was a call to engage. We can never get the message across to the people without engaging with them. Jesus Christ engaged with people, the rich, the poor, the intelligent, the ordinary, the sinners, and those self-proclaimed righteous. He engaged himself with every individual. Jesus immersed himself in the community. Now, here is Jesus Christ with a sinner, a tax collector, Zacchaeus. Now, the question is, how do you engage with people? How do you engage? Well, here's a couple of my suggestions, and this is what I've been using. And I would like to share it with you. Well, number one, of course, you, you need to strike a conversation. And how do you do that? I want you to remember the word shalom. When you go out, if you need to strike a conversation, this is how I do it. Remember the word shalom. Let's do a uh, role playing. Shalom, smile. Smile. Okay. And you said, hello, good morning. You greet the person. Okay. And then acquaint yourself. Introduce yourself. You approach a person. Hi, good morning. I am Mike from the Church of Christ at East Foothill Congregation. And then you leave a note, a card, or a flyer. Well, good morning. Hi, I'm, I'm Brother Mike from the Church of Christ at East Foothill. I just want to bless you with God's amazing grace by giving you this. You give the flyers. You give something to that person. It is what I love doing. I just love to share the Lord Jesus Christ. And then offer. Offer what you, what you have. Bible study. Prayer. I like to do, I like to offer prayer. I always do prayer. Hi, I'm Brother Mike from the Church of Christ in East Foot Hill. And I would just like, I just want to bless you with, with this, you know, with the Word of God. And if you need any prayer for yourself or anybody, you know, of, there is a number there that you can call or you can text. And we would love to pray for you. We would love to study the Bible with you. And then I would go on to say, is there anything right now that you want me to pray for you? Can I pray for you? And make a note. Make a note. During the course of your conversation, you might be asking the name of the person. You might be asking the, the phone number, the contact number, the address and the prayer request, so be sure to take a note. So remember, shalom, smile, say hi, hello, acquaint, live, offer, and make a note. That's how I do it. When I was in Severville, Tennessee, that's how I do it. By striking a conversation, how do you do that? Be creative by connecting a thing to something spiritual. I do it this way. 
when we have we had our bread and coffee ministry back home, just sharing you this. How do you connect a bread to something spiritual? Okay. Me, when I gave out the bread, how's the bread? And the person would say, it's good, it's delicious. And then me, I would say, do you know what's the best bread in the world or even in the universe? And he would be, hmm, I don't know. What is it? Well, Jesus. Jesus said, he is the bread of life. If you have Jesus, you will never be hungry anymore. You connect a thing to something spiritual. Coffee. How do I connect coffee? I love coffee. I love, I love drinking coffee. How do you connect coffee to something spiritual? Whenever I am in a coffee shop, I would ask somebody, how's the coffee in this coffee shop? And he would say, oh, it's good. It's delicious. Do you know that there's a wonderful meaning behind the acronym coffee? And he would be say, hmm, I never knew that. What is it? Christ offers forgiveness for everyone, everywhere. Coffee. Right? When you give out water, how do you connect water to something spiritual? I would approach a person. Um, how many glasses of water do you think you drink every day? Maybe six or more, probably nine or more. You know, what if God created us without being thirsty? That would be something, right? What do you think? That's an open question. And he would respond. At me, I would say, you know what? It is possible to never thirst again. Why? Jesus is the living water. You connect something. You connect a thing to something spiritual. That's how you converse to people. Right? Oh. A, uh, what I did when I was in Tennessee, I asked um, brethren about their evangelism program, about their ministry, how they do ministry, how they advance the gospel in their area. And this is what I, what I found out. And really thankful to a brother from, uh, from uh, New York who gave me this. I will do a role playing. Hello there. I'm Mike from East Foot Hill Congregation. How are you, sir? Oh, um, can, you, can you tell me which one is the shortest or smaller one? The yellow one, all right. Now, which one is the smaller? The green one, right. Well, do you mind checking it for yourself, which, which? You might wanna combine them. Hmm? Which one is shorter? Or are they the same? Oh, they're the same, right? They are the same. They're actually the same. The same size. You know, you know what, sir? Sometimes our eyes can be deceiving. And not only our eyes, even the world is full of deceptions and it will lead you to our doom. But there is one name that will never deceive us and will give us eternal glory. That is yours. There's actually a message there for you from Jesus Christ. I will get that later. <laughs> and um, I mentioned a while ago about you know having something to, to give out, right? When you go out, be sure you have a card or or anything that you that you want to to hand out to somebody. And um, I'll I'll just do one more um, role playing. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, I'm Brother Mike from Church of Christ Church here. I just want to bless you with the word of the Lord. I just want to give you this card. And when you give, when you give that card, okay, be sure. Oh, oh, keep it. Let's search. Keep it. How much is it? Wow. Sir, do you know that when you have Jesus Christ, he is worth more than a million to you because he will give you eternal life in heaven. And that's how you do evangelism. That's how you break 
the wall, right? <laughs> Thank you. So you engage with people. There are so many places in this world that are so unreceptive of the word of God. So be creative. Be creative on how you will break that wall and share the gospel. I'm so thankful for, for the brother that uh, you know, gave me this and gave me this. I never knew that this kind of optical illusion can be used in, mini, in the ministry. I know all about this, but I never knew that it can be used in the ministry. You see, my dear brothers, there's, there's, there's a lot of ways that we can uh, do the ministry. Just be creative to advance the gospel. Engage in the community. Jesus Christ engaged in the community. A month ago, the Carbins and the McElrats gave out school bags. And the East Foothill community page, there's somebody posted that in the East Foothill community page, and they loved it. They love it. They're so grateful, thankful. You see, people will notice you if you do something for the community. If you connect to them through their needs. But guess what? But guess what? Nobody, I mean, referring to the non-members of the Lord's church, nobody is posting the East Foothill Church when we are having service every day. Non-members. But look at what happened last month. Somebody posted in a, in a page what you guys are doing. So engage with people. They will take notice of you if you connect with people. You engage in the community. Jesus Christ immersed himself with the community. But the question is, you might be asking, you know, Brother Mike, what if they don't listen to us? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I tell you. As long as you plant the seed, it doesn't matter. Because you are intentionally trying to grow the church and you are doing what Jesus Christ calls you to do. And that is the Great Commission. And uh, finally, let us put together what we have learned this morning. Be intentional. To grow the church, be intentional. Have that conviction. Amplify the message of the Lord that is in you and engage the people. Growing the church starts with our attitude of, I can. I can. Finally, a final thought. God is not asking your cannots. He is asking for your cans. I can and you can. My dear brethren, the gospel is yours. If there's someone here among us that has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, may we encourage you to turn away from your sins and come to God today. We hope that you will not delay the heeding and the call of the Lord for repentance and being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Again, please come forward as we sing the song of invitation. Shall we all stand, please?